A Boeing 747-400 arrives at Taoyuan International Airport on a scheduled flight from Singapore. It is here, at Taiwan's largest airport, where it will spend a quiet night on its first of a two-sector flight. The aircraft is due to depart the next evening on a flight bound to Los Angeles. Overnight, Typhoon Changsheng approaches the island of Taiwan from the south. The storm has caused great disruption and havoc across the Philippines, killing 40 people. It will soon be slamming onto the coast of Taiwan. The following evening, the crew meet once again and prepare the aircraft for departure. It is a race against time as Typhoon Shangsheng approaches the airfield. In the cockpit are three professional and trained pilots, the captain, the first officer, and the relief pilot. In the cabin are 17 cabin crew members and 159 passengers. The aircraft, a Boeing 747, is the 1099th jumbo jet built. A 747 can generally be flown up to an age of approximately 30 years. This particular aircraft was very new. It was only three years old. It is one of two which was painted with this promotional livery known as Tropical. The aircraft is parked at gate B5 in the south of the airport. Throughout their onboard preparations, they receive and review the airfield general information. It is noted that runway 05 left is in use. Runway 05 right is closed between November 4 and November 5 due to construction work in progress. On this closed runway are two excavators, two vibrating rollers, one bulldozer, jersey concrete barriers, and one air compressor. The weather is reported to be poor as the typhoon brings strong northerly winds of 36 knots, with gusts of 52 knots. Heavy rain is also present. Departing as soon as possible is essential, as the weather is only going to worsen and the aircraft is already close to its takeoff crosswind limit. The pilots continue to prepare the aircraft for departure and receive their air traffic control clearance to Los Angeles. At 11 o'clock local time, the pilots begin the pushback and engine start. Meanwhile, the captain asks the third pilot to monitor the weather reports for any changes. Six minutes past 11, they receive taxi clearance. They are cleared to taxi to Rome with 05 left via taxiway Sierra Sierra, West Cross, and November Papa. They correctly read back the clearance, confirming the taxi route and the signed runway. The lack of ground radar and poor visibility at the airport hinders the air traffic controller's ability to maintain visual contact with the aircraft. Any confusion or doubt during taxi will have to be raised by the pilots to air traffic control via radio. As the aircraft approaches runway 05 right, the first officer states that the next turn would put them onto the November 1 taxiway. The captain acknowledges this and states that they would be the second right to line up onto 05 left. Very shortly after, the first officer calls the tower reporting they are ready for departure. The tower clears them for takeoff from runway 05 left. The pilot correctly reads back the clearance, including the runway number 05 left. Cautious about the surface condition of the taxiway and runway, the captain decides to taxi slower than usual in order to avoid skidding. As the aircraft approaches 05 right, the first officer identifies green taxiway centerline lights. The pilots follow these lights, performing a continuous right turn and line up on the runway. Absolutely no one in the cockpit is aware of this critical decision. Convinced that the aircraft is on the correct runway, the captain sets takeoff power. As the aircraft begins rolling down the runway, routine procedure calls are made. Approximately 30 seconds later, moments from disaster, the captain spots something ahead of him. It is too late. The aircraft collides with construction set equipment at a speed of 131 knots. Debris is found extending almost a kilometer down the runway. Emergency services are immediately dispatched. Rescue efforts are being hindered by the fire which is violently burning through the fuel-flooded fuselage. Passengers on board a nearby aircraft parked in the terminal witness the catastrophe. Some take photos showing the state of the aircraft moments after impact. The jumbo jet is almost unidentifiable. Upon impact with the construction equipment, the aircraft fuselage had split into two main sections, dividing about a point just behind the wing. All of the passengers seated in this tail section of the aircraft survived as they were able to escape through the fireless opening caused by the separation. These passengers accounted for the majority of survivors in the accident. As for the passengers in the forward section, 
only three initially make it out with serious burns. The rest of the survivors also manage to escape through the lower and upper deck exits. A substantial amount of fire had engulfed the forward section of the fuselage, leaving most portions of the aircraft distorted and unidentifiable. The forward left side was the least affected, which had still suffered significant damage. All fatalities were seated in this forward section of the aircraft. Most of them were seated close to the wing, which had also suffered immeasurable amounts of fire damage. The aircraft had 125,000 kilograms of jet fuel. That's enough to fill up six modern Boeing 737s. In the cockpit, all three flight crew members survived with minor injuries. In the cabin, four of the 17 cabin crew members together with 79 of the 159 passengers on board has sadly perished. How could three experienced, qualified pilots fail to identify the sequence of threats which led to this catastrophic accident? An investigation quickly begins to unravel the reasons as to how such an air accident was allowed to occur. Captain Robert Bowser, a former Boeing 747 pilot with 33 years of experience, describes the accident as a severe case of tunnel vision. With the approach of Typhoon Shangsane, the pilots knew that winds would only increase and the window of opportunity was shrinking. The fact that the aircraft would be operating close to its crosswind limits only added pressure to the captain and the crew. After all, the crew were well aware that the runway was closed, so why did they decide to take off? As opposed to continuing the taxi onto 05 left, the captain performed one continuous turn and began the takeoff roll on 05 right. All three flight crew members found visual cues such as runway lighting and signs to be normal. The weather conditions made normal taxi operation difficult due to the risk of skidding. As a result, their taxi speed was greatly reduced. At night and with poor visibility, this may have created the illusion that the aircraft covered a longer distance than it actually did, making the pilots believe they have reached the correct furthest runway. Making mistakes is normal, as we are only human. However, the problem lies in the fact that none of the pilots realized they were on the wrong runway. Visual indications such as signs should be used to verbally announce the position of the aircraft and the runway the aircraft is entering. Airport charts are made available to pilots, which are used to verify taxi routes. Onboard instruments such as the primary flight display, or PFD, are also used to confirm the aircraft is aligned on the correct runway by ensuring the localizer symbol is centered. In this particular case, the symbol would have been displaced, informing the pilots that something was wrong. However, it is also said the airport authority holds some responsibility. The lights for both runways were controlled by air traffic control from a single switch. If each runway had its independent light switch, the lights for runway 05 right could have been switched off. It is likely the pilots would have realized the fact that the runway was not lit. Instead, the runway was colorful and inviting, leading to little doubt the runway was active. Runway 05 right also had a confusing set of lights. On one hand, it looked like a standard runway as a row of white lights were positioned on both sides of the runway. On the other hand, it looked like a standard taxiway because green centerline lights were present. The closure of the runway could have been made more obvious through means of barriers, a lit up sign or crosses painted on the tarmac which is a standard marking for a closed runway. The reported visibility during the departure was 600 meters. The distance between the aircraft and the tower was about 2000 meters. The lack of visual contact between the tower and the aircraft, together with the lack of ground radar, left the controller clueless about the position of the aircraft. Had the airfield been equipped with radar, the controller would have noticed the aircraft was on the wrong runway and could have advised the pilots. As for the authority, there was much criticism directed at the handling of the crash. Following the accident, the pilots were barred from leaving Taiwan until a conclusive investigation was undertaken. This led to immense pressure from 120,000 pilots from over 100 countries, threatening to boycott the country. The pilots were released after two months and allowed to return to Singapore. The pilots were not prosecuted but were fired by Singapore Airlines in 2002. The aircraft shared the same livery with one other aircraft, which was quickly taken out of service and had its paint stripped and replaced with a standard Singapore Airlines livery. Flight 006 was not alone as an accident involving an attempted takeoff from the incorrect runway. In 2006, 
a Colmer CRJ 100 ER, mistakenly attempted to take off from a runway at Lexington, Kentucky. They overran the end of the runway, crashing and killing all passengers on board. The probable cause of the crash was reported to be pilot error, with distractions preventing them from verbally confirming the runway they were on. These type of incidents are not uncommon. In 2019, there were almost a dozen reported cases of commercial pilots finding themselves to be erroneously positioned on a runway. Due to the number of these events taking place, modern technology has been developed to increase the flight crew's situational awareness, providing them with clear and concise oral alerts regarding the aircraft position relative to nearby runways and taxiways. Approaching zero five right. On runway zero five right. This technology, known as runway awareness and advisory system, is being phased into airlines as we speak. Ryanair, Europe's largest low-cost airline, implemented the system into the entirety of its fleet in 2016. The crash of Flight 006 shows how distractions can lead the most experienced pilots with thousands of hours to commit vital errors and lose situational awareness. Organizations such as airlines are reminded to reinforce ground taxi procedures during low visibility operations. Pilots should make use of verbal announcements to confirm the runway being entered by checking onboard instruments, navigational charts, and visual surroundings. The airport authority should make these visual confirmations easier for the pilots by the use of adequate lighting systems and signage on runways and taxiways. <laughs>